What's up, you big bearded outlaws? Let's talk today about, oh, it's okay if you don't have a beard. You could still be an outlaw. Just shave that pretty face. I would just start trying to grow a beard right now though, because it's just kind of a thing, right? You gotta have a beard. Maybe you don't. All right, so scopes. I'm. Let's not baby coat this, okay? I'm not gonna get into a bunch of scopes that 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 just have issues. Let's just get into what scopes actually work over more than a decade of shooting and my circles of people shooting a lot. If I don't mention your scope, I'm sorry. If I do mention your scope and hurt your feelings, well, <clears throat> get out and try it. All right, my favorite scope that exists, period, is a Cullis. I don't think that there's a better scope than a Cullis. Uh, my cold bore world record shot, 2,537 yards, 2,320 meters was with a Cullis. I have literally never had one tracking issue, one bad scope, one broken scope with a Cullis. Um, spelled K-A-H-L-E-S. Some of you people call it Kales. It's Cullis. It's Swarovski's sister company. I love these scopes. They're the best to me. All right, number two scope that I really, really enjoy right now which is also the best. <laughs> These three are the best. All right, is the new Leica uh, PRS scope. Um, actually, uh, Cal Zant from the Precision Rifle blog helped design the reticle. Um, I have two of these optics now, and I put them on my hunting guns. The reason I put them on my hunting guns, even above the Cullis, is because the glass clarity is so good, and usually when you're hunting, you're doing it right there at first light, or right there at last light in the ambient light to get those gigantic animals. And so you're not doing it in the middle of the day. Most scopes look good in the middle of the day. I need that ambient light you can barely see. In one minute, it's shooting light, and there it is, boom, I shoot, because that's when the monsters are out. This Leica does amazing for that. So far, it's tracking very well. I've had it for, I've had one for a year. I just got this one. Um, so we're gonna be putting this one to its paces too. All right, the other scope that I really like is Night Force. Um, I've never had an issue with Night Force optics at all. Um, I have several Night Forces. It's one of the toughest scopes on the market, period. Um, I like Night Force. Leica glass is better than Night Force glass. Swarovski glass is better. Cullis glass is right there on par. All of them though, you're, you're literally like splitting hairs as to which one you think is a little bit better. Um, if you get all of them lined up together and you get five guys, all five guys kind of pick something different in those, the glass quality is so good. An honorable mention that I don't have with me is a Schmitten Bender. If you can find a Schmitten Bender pre-2015, post-2019, they're great. 15 to 19 Schmitten Bender had a ton of problems. Do not buy a 15 to 19 Schmitten Bender. If I'm gonna buy one right now, I literally go find the date by the serial number. If it's 2015 to 2019, I stay away from it at all and I'll jump into you know 20 post 2019 or pre 2015. You get a great Schmitten Bender. They're tough scopes, they last forever. The glass quality on them is every bit as good as Leica. You'll really like that scope. Scopes that I don't like, Vortex. Oh my gosh, Vortex. I can't believe he said he didn't like Vortex. I have personally owned 11 different Vortexes, different variables of optics. They either don't track right, they have, I broke the spotting scope in half. Literally, I'm hunting, we're hunting Barbary sheep. When I spot with a spotting scope, I hold my hands on like this to help steady it, and the entire spotting scope broke in half last year. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. You drive me freaking crazy with that. So I'm, I'm just not a Vortex fanboy. Now, Vortex. The, the one exception is they're one to six. Um, I think they're one to six, judging by all of the military units that I know that have used them and the competition users for the AR-15, I think they may have done that scope right. I haven't ever used one because here's what happened. I realized their warranty is super good because they did replace those scopes, but when I'm making that shot of a lifetime or my life depends on that shot, I'm, I'm just not interested. I, I don't care about your warranty. Like when I broke my spotting scope, your warranty didn't matter to me. I had to put the stupid thing together and duct tape it. So I don't use them. All right, another one that I don't like that much is loophole. I've had some loophole Mark IVs that work. Most of them don't. I have heard from the army that the loophole Mark V, five, five to 25 is a good optic. I don't personally know because I don't have one. Loophole. Let's talk. Let's talk. I mean, we've worked together in the past. I love Leupold. They're great people. They've just had a, a history recently of bad scopes. I say recently. Recently, I think they might have fixed their problem, but I haven't shot any of those because 
what does it say? One bad optic and the whole company sucks. That's really not the truth. The company could be great. I just don't trust them anymore. So it makes it very difficult when you don't trust a company. I do trust Cullis. I do trust Nightforce. I do trust Leica, some Schmidt and Bender. That's where I go. I am a firm believer that I'm gonna spend as much money as I can on an optic and less money on a rifle if, if I'm gonna do long range shooting because what I need in long range shooting is I need the gun to be as scientifically correct as it possibly can so when I missed the shot, it was my fault and not the guns. There's nothing worse than tearing apart your whole freaking gun trying to figure out what, I, what my gun did wrong when it was really you. All right, guys, appreciate you very much. Like, subscribe, hit the bell notifications, get you a beard so you can be an outlaw. Thank you.